Hello, welcome to this video all about the Brentum scheduler component. Let's get you up and running with this amazing fully fledged scheduling UI for your Vue.js applications. And we'll start in this video by configuring and setting up the dependencies. I've already created a brand new Vue project by running npm init view at three, which is the officially recommended way of starting a new project. Before we start, we need to make sure that we add Brentum's npm registry to our project. To do that, we can add this line of code here to a .mpmrc file. If you didn't already have this file in your project, you can create it just like I did. This tells npm that anything under the Brentum namespace should come from the registry hosted at this URL. Configuring the registry in this file configures it just for this current project. If you want to use Brentum products on multiple projects though, then you can run npm config set and then the line that we provided in the npm rc. This will set the registry globally. After this, you'll need to log in to the registry, and we can do this by running the following command in our terminal. npm login and then specify which registry to log into with the registry flag. Great, so the username that you need to provide here is the email address on your Brentum account. For me, that was daniel at vueschool.io. However, there is one critical difference here. Instead of using the at symbol, we need to use a dot dot instead. Excellent. Next, for your password, if you are a trial user, it's just the word trial, but for those of you with a premium license, you'll want to enter whatever password you registered in the Printum dashboard. Lastly, you'll just need to provide your email address. And this can be in the standard format. Great, now we're logged in and can start installing the dependencies. Specifically, I want to install the Printum scheduler core, as well as the view specific component for the scheduler. Finally, I'll also include just a few demo resources to make styling my demo application a little bit easier. Besides these Brentum specific dependencies, let's also install the SAS preprocessor since Brentum style sheets are written in SAS. And you can choose to use either SAS or CSS, but we'll do SAS for our project. If you're still using Vue CLI, you will also need to install the SAS loader for Webpack as well. With all the dependencies now installed, let's get the proper style sheet set up so that our application looks good out of the box. Over in my source directory, and then inside of the assets directory, there is a main.css file. Now the styles that we want to provide are the Stockholm scheduler theme from the Brendan package as well as this example SCSS for the demo resources, just to help me a little bit with the demo. Of course, we can't import an SCSS file into a CSS file, so let's update the extension to SCSS, which means we'll also have to update where it's imported in main.js. One other little configuration option that I need to provide is because I'm using Vite in order to run this project. If you're using Vue CLI, you wouldn't have to do this step. But inside of vite.config.js, you should also provide the optimize depths.include option and set it to an array with the Brentum scheduler dependency and the Brentum scheduler view 3 dependency. With that, we're ready to start actually using the component. Let's take care of that over in app.view, where I've already cleared out the boilerplate code, and we just have an empty script setup in template section. In script setup, I'll import the Brentum scheduler from the scheduler v3 package. That means we can then use the component inside of the template section. However, the scheduler alone 
doesn't provide a whole lot of value without some configuration options provided. I'll paste in some nice starter configuration for us, and then we'll go over what exactly it's doing. Awesome. So here on line five, I've created a variable called config, and I've defined it as a reactive reference. Of course, reactive is coming from the view core library. Then I provided a start date, which tells our scheduler what date it should start at. In this case, the year 2024, the first month, the first day, and then the sixth hour of that day. And then the same thing for the end date here. For our view preset, we're telling it that we want our calendar to show up as hour and day. In other words, show me hours across the top. You'll see what that means in just a moment. For the row height, we're setting how tall each row of our schedule should be. And then columns determines what columns are over on the left side of the scheduler. This is how you'll be able to display different attributes of different resources within our schedule. We'll customize this for our app in just a moment. Finally, on line 15, we're binding the entire configuration object so they're provided as props. Let's give that a save, and then with the development server up and running, let's check things out over in the browser. Very nice. Here is our schedule without any records at all yet in place, but it's already looking really, really nice, right? We have 6 a.m. at the start here, then we have a column for each hour of the day, and that is because of this view preset hour and day here. If I were to comment this out and then go back over to the browser, you'll see instead we have the days of the week like this showing. Great. I'll just comment that back in now. Now for the columns, you'll notice we have a text of name here. That's exactly what shows up on the left hand side we have a column labeled name. Let me zoom in so you can see that just a little bit better. Cool, yeah, that says name, and wow, look at that. The columns even adjust size quite nicely, and I can even scroll to see more of the schedule. Great. Right now, however, we have no records to display. So this scheduler isn't very useful without us trying to keep the schedule for something, right? Maybe we're trying to keep schedules for rentals in an Airbnb clone. Maybe we're trying to keep up with the schedules of employees at the workplace. The way we add these records is with a resources property in our config object. And let's say we're trying to keep up with the schedule for a bunch of people at a company. Cool. So now each resource is an object with an ID, a name, an age, and then some metadata, specifically what job at the company they do. Back over in the browser now, you can see we have all of the different people listed in our schedule. I scroll down, sure enough, there is all 10 individuals. Now, let's say we also want to display the age of each individual. Back over in the code, we can easily do that by adding a new object to the columns array. Just like the existing column, this column will need a text property to tell it what the actual text that displays for the column header is going to be. Next, we have the filled property, which matches up the column to which piece of data should show up in that column. For us, that's going to be the age property. Lastly, we can give it a custom width, and since age is always a lot shorter than the names, let's go with something pretty short. How about 50? Great. Back over in the browser, now we do have that age column showing up nicely next to name. Out of the box then, I'm able to click on the column headers and reorder the different resources, by descending or ascending order. So that works for both numbers and works for alphabetical order with strings as well. 
now that we have some people in order to make schedules for, how do we actually put events on their schedule? Well, back in the configuration object, let's provide a property called events. This is a flat array of all the different events that should show up on the scheduler. And I'll paste some in now. All right, so I pasted in quite a few things here, but they all essentially look exactly the same. They, of course, just all have different values depending on when and what the event is. So here I have a event. Each event should have an ID, and then it's matched up to the resource or the person based on this resource ID property. Next, we tell it when the event should start and when it should end, give the event a name, and you can even customize the icons on the event using Fawn Awesome. The string here in reality is b-fa-mouse-pointer. I just have the actual icon in line because of a Visual Studio Code extension I have installed for Fawn Awesome. And you can see we're doing the exact same thing for all of these other events. What does this look like on the scheduler? Well, something like this. Voila, let me zoom out again so that we can see all the events at once. Amazing. Here you can see that Sam has his dad's birthday on January 1st, 2024 at 9 a.m. We can drag the event around to make it a longer time frame, shorten it, or move it to a different time altogether. Since we're working in Vue.js, we of course can use Vue's dev tools in order to change some of this data up and see how the page would update in real time. For example, let's modify the row height in our configuration object. And just like that, the page updates in real time and we could see what things would look like if we changed this value. We could do the same thing with the event color, which provides the default color for the events. Perfect, that works as well. This is just a brief introduction on how to get the Brentum scheduler set up and bootstrapped for your Vue.js application. There are still tons more you can do with this amazing package. Things like customizing the context menu that pops up when you right click on an event, or customizing what fields display in the event editor when you double click on an event, and even providing validation to each of the different fields within the event editor. Be sure to tune into subsequent videos teaching just that. In the meantime, if you're more of a reader than someone who likes to learn from videos, then I suggest you check out a couple of different documents inside of the Brentum Scheduler documentation. They have this excellent getting started page that goes over a lot of the same details I went over for setting up the Brentum Scheduler in your project, plus this really great tutorial that walks you through using the Brentum scheduler in the context of a V3 project, much like we've done in this video, but even a bit deeper. Finally, if you move to the guides portion of the docs, you'll find very in-depth information about all of the different things you can do with the scheduler, all the different configurations you can do, all the different events you can listen for, and so on and so forth. They're not necessarily all in the context of a view app, but can be very easily adapted. So from here, the world is your oyster. You now have the ability to make amazing scheduling interfaces in your own apps with the power of the Brentum Scheduler.